Your lesson essential question is how do we determine the author's purpose for writing an informational text? Yesterday we talked about author's purpose and how the author's purpose is their reason for writing a specific text. We talked about how sometimes they're describing something, sometimes they're answering questions, and sometimes they're just explaining something. So, authors write with a purpose or a reason. Some of the reasons authors write is to, like we said, describe, answer questions, or explain a topic. We call it the author's purpose or their reason. So we'll be looking for descriptions, very descriptive words like yesterday. The vegetables were being described with specific words using colors and the look of them. We'll be looking for the answers to questions, or we'll just be looking for explanations about something. So we'll really look for details that support the topic and show the author's purpose. We'll start by identifying the main topic. We have to know what the text is all about before we can figure out why it was written. Then we'll look at, is the author describing, explaining, or answering questions? Then we'll look for those key details that support the points the author is trying to make. Tomorrow, you're going to be in describing those key details in the author's purpose in your writing. So remember, at the end, we always put it all together with writing or speaking. This text is called George Crumb Inventor. Let's read it and then you'll identify the main topic. You may love crunchy, salty potato chips, but do you know who first made them? A man named George Crumb did in 1853. He invented them by accident. Crumb was a cook who made delicious french fries, but one day a man complained. He said the fries were too thick. Crumb made the fries thinner, but the fussy man still wasn't happy, so Crumb made the fries so thin and crunchy that the man couldn't eat them with his fork. Instead of being angry, the man loved them. Other people who tried Crumb's treats also loved them. A few years later, George Crumb opened his own restaurant. A big basket of potato chips was placed on every table. In 1895, the first potato chip factory was built. Now, people could buy potato chips at the store and put them on their own tables. Before we talk about the author's purpose for writing this, I want you to identify the main topic, so take a second and do that. You probably said this text is all about how potato chips were invented. Let's talk about why the author wrote this. So take a look at some of these details and think about what we read. Why do you think the author wrote this? Well, I didn't see this author giving specific descriptions, and I definitely didn't see him answering questions, but he was for sure explaining to us the process of how these chips were invented. So the author's purpose was to explain how potato chips were invented. As I start looking through the text, I want to look for details that tell me how potato chips were invented. So I see here a man complained that his fries were too thick. 
So what did Crumb do? He made them thinner. That shows me the first step to potato chips being invented. What happened next? Probably said the fussy man still wasn't happy. So Crumb made them so thin and crunchy that they couldn't even be eaten with a fork. So now he's got crunchy fries. Next I see that the man loved them. Other people who tried them also loved them. So all of these things are explaining how the chips became invented. There's a few more key details in the rest of this text. You're actually going to be identifying another key detail on your own in your assignment today. So we know that first the fries were too thick, so he made them thinner. Again, they were still too thick, so he made them even thinner. And then we know that everyone loved them. So what happened next that really made them become famous? That's what you're going to be telling me in your assignment today.